when people disconnect from, and I'm going, to, I'm going to use this as a very generic way of saying, from the Judeo-Christian principles, and I don't really like to use that term here, but I'm using that to be generic. You get what current society has become. We are confused. If you think about it, we have been um, almost force-fed, almost like things that have been pushed in our face. You will accept this. You will make this. You will accept that these things that we're pushing at you are the social norms that should be accepted and embraced by all. And the problem is that people who read this book will find themselves at a crossroads. Now, I'm going to say something very quick. I, people have criticized me over the years why I don't talk about or preach messages on homosexuality, on abortion, on divorce. And I've said to you before, any man or woman standing in a pulpit who starts condemning one group of people, do not be a hypocrite. You must condemn all. You must call everything out. And if that's the case, the question is who is able to hear and who is able to stand. And that means no one. That's why I live by the principles of Romans 3.23. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But I will not have people try to say to me, well, you know, you should... You should lessen the standards. They're not my standards. They're God's standards. Everybody is welcome here. I've never said you can't come in here if you ABC fill in the blanks. I've only said one thing about that. Back in the early days, we had people that were showing up at the door in flip-flops and uh, what I call wife-beater shirts. And I'm sorry, that save that for the beach. If you don't have enough decency to wear a shirt that has a sleeve on it a little bit and cover your legs and put on some shoes Sunday morning. Sorry, God does not care what you look like when you come to church, but I do. <laughs> and I will not have his house disrespected. If, if this generation lacks that respect, I will draw the line and say that's what's demanded. And if you don't want to, don't come in here. It's not like I'm desperate to beg people to come in because somehow we've got to let somebody in. There's people that have come and they don't know any better and you let them in and you tell them, please, next time, there's a dress code. And it's not really a dress code, it's just called be appropriate, right? So it's interesting that all these things get, keep getting pushed and the limit keeps getting pushed and it's almost like in your face. Uh, but somebody asked me, uh, I believe it was last week, how come I, I have not touched on the subject of the current uh, transgender, uh, basically the LGBTQ, and add all the letters after that because I'm losing track of them. Uh, and here's what I'm going to tell you, and I'm only going to say this once, so listen very carefully. That's for you to work out. If you read this book and you're reading it with the desire to know God's heart, then conviction will come to you by God through his spirit. Not me, not a preacher, not someone condemning you. I, I'm not in the position to condemn you or judge you. But you are to work this out with him. And anybody who stands in a pulpit that says, well, I'm for, I embrace, or I'm against, and I detest, you've done the very thing that we're told not to do. Now, does the Bible have admonitions against certain behaviors? And it's not limited to homosexuality. Just think of it this way. You want to know what hypocrisy is while the church, some of the factions of the church are busy saying, well, if you don't accept this, then, you know, you've got hate. Well, Jesus took the Ten Commandments and raised the bar because he basically said, not forget about thou shall not kill. If you hate in your heart, you're as guilty as a murderer. So I don't need somebody laying a guilt trip on me of what I'm not doing. I'm doing what I'm supposed to do. And I suggest that those people who have an issue, you work it out with God. I'm not your judge. This is a church open to people with one criteria. You know that you're a sinner. You know that your pastor's a sinner. 
We all need to be saved by grace through the shed blood of Jesus Christ. Put a period there. Save your comments. Talk to God about it. I'm not your judge, your jury. I don't condemn you. Nor do I say I'm going to embrace what people are trying to push at me so I should somehow lessen down what this book says. I am called like any person who's been called and given a charge to preach the word of God. That means keep pastors, ministers, Keep your opinion to yourself. Everybody has one. It's like any other part of the body. Keep it to yourself and figure out that God will judge accordingly. Mine is just to open up the word. And as I said, if you're reading this book, and if you're really reading it, not cherry picking, not deciding what you can and cannot agree with, conviction will come somehow to show you what it is that God desires of you. And each one of us has our own individual issues that need to be worked out. So that's all I have to say there. I'm just, I'm, I'm just getting tired of two things. We went through the 80s and the 90s with mostly Protestant preachers calling out gay and homosexual behavior because of AIDS and a myriad number of other things. And that got, the pendulum got swung too far one way. Now the pendulum's gone too far the other way, where um, there's a certain denomination within the Protestant church that basically has decided it has split from its, it's a denomination now within a new denomination because this particular denomination has decided, one part has decided that it will basically embrace the LBGQ community, uh, and I'm not saying that we don't embrace that. I'm saying to you that there are certain guidelines with which I will stand and preach. That's God's word. Don't try and change what God's word says. That's probably the best advice I can give anybody. Live by the book or throw it away. <laughs> This house, magnify the Lord, lift up holy hands, our hearts in one accord, worship and bow down before.